Hello everybody and welcome to this uh, training on how to extract uh, power from a solar cell. Um, my name is Stefano Stanzione and I work for IMEC and uh, and I'm researcher in ultra low power analog IC design. Um, so everybody of you probably is uh, knowing what how a solar cell looks like. Uh, it's based on the uh, photoelectric uh, principle so in practice is a voltage barrier uh, and when a photon is absorbed in the junction between these two materials uh, the charge generated so the hole and the, ele the electron can be separated by the electric field and be pushed towards the, um, the electrodes. Um, in practice this uh, implies that you will have a current even when uh, the voltage is zero and this current is called short circuit current and can be in indicated as IL illumination current as you can see in this formula. Uh, so actually the uh, characteristic of a diode gets translated, gets shifted up by the illumination current. Uh, so what happens is that if you calculate the power so you multiply the current times the voltage you get this kind of curve and for low voltages you have a linear increase of the power because simply the current is constant and the voltage is linear increasing. But at a certain point the exponential characteristic of the diode takes the lead and push down the uh, characteristic so you will have peaks of the power like shown in this, in this figure. And you can see that the peak of the power is not always for the same voltage of the solar cell but uh, is moving uh, when the illumination level changes. Um, we can define a characteristic resistance RCH as the resistance you should connect to the solar cell to extract maximum power out of it. And this resistance can be easily approximated as the open voltage over the short circuit current of the solar cell. Now let's make the things a bit more complicated. So we have seen the illumination current, we have seen the diode, but there are also some more things to model like dissipative effects. We have a serious resistance which is due to the finite conductance of the material and also to the contact resistances. And also we have a shunt resistance RP which is modeling more or less the impurities in the material. Uh, and both will reduce the maximum power you can extract from a solar cell. Um, what happens if we do the simplest thing we will think about, so connect a load circuit directly to a solar cell. From this simple uh, circuit you can see that if uh, we do that, the uh, voltage across the load will be non-constant because the illumination level will change, maybe there are some moments in which there is shadow uh, and so uh, you will not have a regulated output voltage. Also, when indeed there is shadow and there is very low light conditions, the load will not work. And finally, you have problems of matching with the load resistance because uh, the uh, load resistance would in general not be equal to the RCH which is the optimal resistance that the solar cell wants to see as load. Uh, so we need something in between, we need, we need to put some circuit between the load and the solar cell and this interfacing circuit can be simply something like an inductive switch converter or a switch capacitor converter. Um, Let's try now to dive into the, these two circuits and to understand why to choose one or the other, for example. An inductive step-up converter is a circuit like this. What happens is that when you turn on the switch, the inductor current starts increasing linearly, like in this plot, and then when you turn off the switch, the inductor current decreases linearly and follows, flows inside the diode and on the output capacitance. If you calculate the energy that you put in the system and the energy that you, put, you get out of the system, uh, you get for ideal switches, so without any uh, parasitics, parasitic capacitances on the switching nodes, etc., you get 100% efficiency. So charging an inductance is inherently not a lossy mechanism. And that's very nice. Of course, 
when you do something practically, so you buy a component, then the efficiency, the peak efficiency will not be 100%, will be something 90, 95%. And you will have a shape like this as function of the load current. So we will have something dropping down for very low load currents because you have the control circuits losses, the quiescent current that start to wait. You will have also powertrain losses. So the switches in reality have a finite uh, value of uh, resistance. The inductor is not ideal and you have some parasitic capacitances on the switching nodes. So the characteristic will have a peak somewhere. Um, what happens with capacitive step-up converters? Uh, their working principle is very easy to understand. So you have two capacitances. First, during the phase V1, you connect the capacitor C1 in, uh, and you charge it with the voltage v, v in. And then during the phase V2, you in practice put the capacitor C1 in series to V in uh, towards uh, capacitor C2. So in the end, at steady state, you will have a voltage, an output voltage, if there is no load connected, equal to twice the uh, input voltage. What happens is that if you calculate the efficiency in that condition, let's simplify without any load resistance, you get an efficiency which depends on the voltage which is completely different from what we got in inductive converters. And 100% is got only at one point when the ratio between input and output is equal to the steady state uh, value that you would like to achieve without any load. Um, and in between, you have very low efficiencies. So what, what typically is done to overcome this problem is to make many uh, types of converters, all with different voltage ratios, and then, uh, let's say, select one or the other, select always the one that is matching better the voltage where we are operating. And this is done, for example, in this nice uh, ISCC paper of 2014, where they not only optimize the voltage ratio uh, dynamically, but they also optimize the oscillation frequency and they have a quiescent current extremely low of three nanowatts. Uh, so now let's try to uh, kind of compare uh, these two approaches, inductive and capacitive conversion. Uh, for sure, inductive conversion is very difficult to integrate. I mean, inductances are much more difficult to integrate than capacitors. So if you want a very small solution, fully integrated, good to go for capacitive converter. If you want the highest possible efficiency, then it's good to go for inductive conversion. And in general, in terms of output voltage and output current range, uh, inductive conversion is better, but capacitive converters are stepping out more and more uh, as a trend. Now let's talk about the maximum power transfer. We said that the input resistance of this interfacing circuit should be equal to the characteristic resistance of the cell. So we need in some ways to tune some parameter, for example, the switching frequency to get uh, always in this maximum power points here. And to do so, there, is an al there are algorithms called the maximum power point trackers that have the following task. They have to be fast enough to follow all the illumination, for example, uh, variations, and they need to be highly efficient, which means that they have precisely to match the input resistance because every error causes power losses. They have to be stable because if they oscillate around the maximum power point, then you lose efficiency. And they have to be low power because you don't want to consume with this algorithm more power than what you get uh, by using them. So the simplest types of MPPT algorithms are the cost of constant voltage and constant current. So constant voltage means that uh, it can be observed that the optimal point, the maximum power point, happens at a cell voltage, which is a certain fraction of the open voltage. So simply what you do, you open the cell, measure the open voltage, and then calculate this fraction of the, of the open voltage and try to modify the switching frequency until you get to that voltage. And this is very fast and simple. 
but of course this optimal ratio is something that varies between different types of cells so you are not creating really a generic solution and also is inefficient because always when you disconnect the solar cell from the interfacing circuit you are wasting all the power that is generated in the, into the solar cell constant current is the dual approach so the best the optimal current is a fraction of the short circuit current also in this case it's very simple and fast optimal ratio is dependent on the, on the type of solar cell and it's inefficient because you are going to short circuit the solar cell once in a while a uh, more generic approach is the perturb and observe algorithm in this case what you need is a bit more complexity you need to evaluate the uh, output power of your uh, in of your system and try to maximize it so you actually do things step by step you monitor the output power then change a bit the frequency or the cell voltage and you detect that the power is increased then you continue changing the direction until the sign of the power variation doesn't change and then you return back and you will remain oscillating around this maximum uh, what happens in this case is that you have a trade-off between the speed uh, that you have in uh, reaching in climbing the hill in reaching the top of this power hill and uh, oscillations around the maximum power point because if you want to reduce these oscillations you need to reduce this this uh, step sides which means that you will take will spend more time to climb the hill so a better way would be to make this step variable so you would like to go faster when you are far from the top of the hill and go very slow very make very little steps when you are on the top of the hill so you would like actually to have a step size which is proportional to the slope to the uh, let's say uh, the derivative of this curve and this is what is done in the variable step size perturb and observe al algorithms which have all the advantages they are fast and stable widely applicable but they have one disadvantage they are complex and an example of this is shown in uh, uh, ISCC 2013 and is a fully analog algorithm uh, using uh, actually a step size which is proportional to the logarithm of the power variation so in conclusion we have seen in this uh, short training uh, the solar cell characteristics and modeling and the types of interfaces circuits that typically are used and why they are used and also the reason behind the use of maximum power point tracking algorithms and uh, we have given a bit of uh, examples of the advantages and disadvantages of different types of algorithms.